Here's an update from yesterday. Tori Spelling, we, we talked about her yesterday. When she her bathroom s- habits? Yeah, yeah, she said she had not been alone in the bathroom for 18 years. That was her thing because first her husband watched her use the bathroom and now her son. I haven't been alone. Like, I, like honestly, like, I still don't poop alone. Like, Bo still stands there and stares and talks to me, like, while I'm pooping. Like, it's just like, I haven't pooped, peed alone in 18 years. Yeah. First it was Dean. Then it was kids. I think I function better with people. Is that codependent? Yes. Cool. Dean's her first husband. They're divorced now. And the kids, she's had five, which uh, I just read today. Uh, her youngest is Bo, who's seven and still watches her use the bathroom. The update is on that very same podcast. Yes. She said, let me get the quote right. Her ob her OBGYN, says mm. she, this is graphic now, says she has the vagina of a 14-year-old. All right. You know how doctors will say that. Do they, do they really say that? Well, they'll say, <laughs> you have the heart of a 20-year-old. Mm. Well, hers said, you have the vagina of a 14-year-old, which I think is way worse. That's terrible. That's way worse. Yeah. Why would you say that to somebody? She credits the C-section. She said she's had a C-section for her all her births, and so she, because she wanted to maintain, maintain, and she has, and she recommends it to anyone. <laughs> but, I mean, that's kind of up to the, you and your doctor, right? Yes. I mean, do most doctors recommend the traditional birth? I, you know, I don't know. I don't even know what, I mean, what the percentages are. I'm, I don't either. I know for us. Well, you're I puckering can't. already. I can I'm see not, you I'm puckering. Not, I'm not going to say. Look at, look at his body language, Biggie. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're tense. It's clear. <laughs> I'm not going to say. Your, your neck is literally withdrawing into yeah. your shoulders. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I brought this up. I don't Some even men are uncomfortable with the word vagina. Oh, <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Vagina. Does it make you uncomfortable? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it does. Just that. When Tori Spelling says, my ob guy says I have the vagina of a 14-year-old. Yeah. She's vag shaming. That's a vag shame. That's a, totally. Yeah, that's 100% right. That's 100% a vag shame. The ob guns lying. <laughs> and where did she I mean, say this? She said it on a podcast. Worthless. <laughs> yeah. And really, if you're the ob and you just, you want to make people happy for the most part. So you just say, oh, yeah, it looks a... Uh, Look great. <laughs> no one wants to honestly hear like, "Oh, you can definitely tell you've had five. Uh, <laughs> or, I mean, does the doctor pop up from down when she's in the stirrups and look up and say, "So when do you start?" Oh, hey, I thought you were going to start college next year. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, you're a grown woman. My goodness, I couldn't tell when I was under the hood. <laughs> that's that's yeah. <laughs> This is Tori Spelling talking mm-hmm. now. She's that. That's what she says. Uh, Pam Anderson. Uh, this is another. Well, the nineties are so back. They're back. I think it was the OJ death. <laughs> I think that's what has brought the nineties. OJ, back. John Wayne, John Wayne, Bob, Bob it. Back Tori the, Spelling's vag. Back in the news. Tori Spelling's vag. Pam Anderson. Pammy has joined the cast of the Naked Gun remake. They're remaking those Naked Gun movies. That's right. Liam Neeson will star. In the Star Wars, Detective Frank Drebin. That was originally played by Leslie Nielsen. I think that's a great idea. Oh, my God. I think he's going to be phenomenal. quite good. Absolutely. Because he can deadpan it just like Leslie Nielsen used to. But he gets the joke. Absolutely right. I think he's going to do a tremendous job. You know the old one. Nice beaver. Thank you. I just had it stuffed. We really should have had Dave Aiken in here. for that. That's one of his favorite lines. Of all time. Of all time. He'll, of all cinema. Dave will say it from time. We'll we'll play Naked Gun in here. But I know. 99% of the time, it's that long. Nice beaver. Thank you. I just had it stuffed. Let me help you with that. I, uh, did you, <laughs> do we have any OJ clips from the no. Oh, no, the we don't. That, no, <laughs> OJ played Nordberg. And he was always getting hurt. Yeah. yeah. God, very, very funny. I mean, I, know. I loved him then. I loved and And, and Chris Dibb's doing something now. That I, I, I really should. My wife's giving you credit for this. The other day during the Masters, I saw an interview with Max Homa. I knew Biggie had money on Max Homa. And I didn't know much about him. I've seen him play, of course. And he gave an interview at the end of round two or three. He was like one shot off the lead. Yeah. And I loved 
the cut of his jib. I just thought he was great. <laughs> I like him. I do too. You like a homo jib. I like homo. Yeah, I like a homo jib. He's got kind of a. He's got a little bit of sense of humor to him. Yeah, too. didn't take himself too seriously. Yeah. He's. I just think he's really good. I. I, I felt like he was down to earth. So I just. Mm. I. I texted everybody and said, Max Homa is my new favorite <laughs> golfer. He seems like such a nice guy. And Chris Dim wrote back and said, "You know who else seemed like a nice guy?" And there's a big smiling picture of OJ. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember which era the yeah. OJ pick was. But I, wonderful. Like, I, like right before. I, I'd he was say, very smiling I'd say about 38 years old. Yeah. Gosh, smiling. top of the world. It hurts commercials, I think, yeah. is that era, you know? You zinged them. Yeah. And so did our, uh, uh, Barstool Sports. They do a little Sunday interview. Yeah. And his uh, it was with Max Homa. Yeah. And the guy does It's all kind of parody, funny stuff. And the guy says, uh, you were a collegiate athlete. Mm-hmm. And Max Homa says, I was. And he goes, so was Aaron Hernandez. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Over the line. <laughs> Over the line. And that Max Homa starts laughing. He goes, why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> That's over the line. Yeah, so, That's I mean, a wind up. Uh, Chris Dim zinged him with that, Zingham's, too. You know who else people thought <laughs> was a nice guy? It's two zings on Homa. <laughs> oh, jeez. And what's Homa done to anybody? Nothing. Just a nice Not guy. A Just a nice Not guy. A, a nice young man. Just a, a fine young man. So, fine swing. I didn't notice, by the way, the correlation between nice beaver and Tori Spelling and her OB kind. <laughs> Say yeah. you have the huh? uh, the vagina of a 14 Your grid is a disaster. Uh, my, this you've, grid. Got the, you've got the grid of a 90-year-old. I can't believe yeah. I put the grid. <laughs> <laughs> of a demented 90-year-old. <laughs> Worst grid of the week. Yeah. I'm sitting here looking at this like, my God, how did this grid fall into place? This who put this to, who oh, put, I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a terrible grid. This grid is awful. Beaver, okay. Follow that with a beaver story. Follow that with a beaver clip. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, God. So, in Leave it to Beaver news. <laughs> oh, uh, God. This grid is terrible. I've got to have somebody else review the grid. Yeah. This, this is an awful grid. You know, it's back to the, uh, now back to the 80s. Now, I did find this fascinating. I was uh, reading today, and you know, I saw that documentary on We Are the World. Uh, it's called The Greatest Night in Pop. It's on Netflix. Loved it. I've seen it. It's phenomenal. You did like I it. I finally watched it after you all talked about it. It's great. It really is. Pulls you in. Only an hour and a half and really good. They talked to like 10 of the people that were there and, and more. I, they talked to like 10 of the singers, you know, the, the big name, Lionel Richie, uh, Kenny Loggins talked on it a lot, Cindy Lauper. Well... Huey Lewis says, and here's the story. Prince was supposed to be at We Are the World. They really wanted Prince there. And he was going to do a solo line. You know, it was it was the pick was who gets the solos because about half the people or more only got to sing in the chorus. Like Hall and Oates are both there, but only Hall got to sing the solo. True. Oates is back in the background. Uh Bet Bet Midler is there. She didn't get to sing a solo line. Mm. I noticed she, you know, she came in and waved to the crowd and everything. So uh, they're trying to get Prince. All through the night, they're trying to get Prince. I mean, they keep calling, like, can Prince come? They promised Sheila E. a solo, but really, she said later, they were just using me as Prince bait. I feel bad for her. <laughs> Another Chris Dim term, Prince bait. <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. I felt bad for her, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, we all know she yeah. was just like a one or two hit wonder, but. Yeah, you're not going to let her sing a solo in that song. Not mm-hmm. in that. Not with that historic group around her. So. Instead of Prince singing the solo, he left. They put Huey, or he wasn't ever there. They put Huey Lewis in his spot to do the solo. And uh, he just learned, Huey Lewis, after watching the documentary, that he would have never gotten the solo if not for Kenny Loggins. Because when Prince didn't show up, Kenny Loggins went over to Michael Jackson and said, you know who'd be great for this solo? That line is Huey Lewis. Mm. And so they went over to Huey. Michael Jackson didn't say, can you sing right Mm -hmm. after me? And Huey Lewis had never met Michael Jackson. He was like, I was in awe, mm. and here I've got to sing right after him. It was great. Huey Lewis seems like a really nice guy, just like O.J. Simpson. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> he seems like a nice guy. So uh, one more add on to that. This is Huey Lewis's solo, and he comes right after Michael Jackson. We get down and out, and no There's Michael. Here comes Huey. But if you just believe, it's not there's Cindy Lauper. And here comes Kim Carnes. One more note on that. So there could have been Michael the Prince. It would have been Michael the Prince. 
Wow. Wow, indeed. Yeah, they, they never got together. I know. Mm-mm. It would have been Michael to Prince, and Huey was satisfied just being in the background. He didn't even mm-hmm. know or want the solo. He's like, I'll just be here, and they let him do it. There's one more note on this. You've never been a huge Kim Carnes fan. Yeah, agree. I, I, her voice doesn't do it for me. In that, here's another thing from the documentary. It's supposed to go Huey Lewis, Cindy Lauper, then Kim Carnes to finish, but she never could get it right. So they, Her voice they, is a little thin. They never liked her version of it. So somebody said, okay, Huey, do your line. Cindy, do your line. Then we'll do a three-part harmony, Huey, Cindy, and Kim Carnes on the last part. So that's why that, that's why that happened. We got Michael and Huey. It's Huey. Cindy now. Kim Carnes gets two words. When we. Here it is. Yeah, it needed more punch. Exactly. So they said, so somebody came over and uh, Lionel Richie came over and said, we're going to have to pump up. Kim Kim's too thin. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> I can hear it. It's so great. It's one of the most memorable parts. It's probably the most memorable parts of the song because, you know, here comes Cindy Lauper, you know, mm. at the end and they just go crazy. So I loved it. And- Sheila E is making me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> it did. So they, uh, Michael said, Kim Carnes is a disaster. Stan Aykroyd doing you. <laughs> That's my favorite part of the documentary. I know. Every scene, Dan Aykroyd just looks confused. Like, I know. Oh, what am I? <laughs> what am I and then you find out that it was just some random secretary who was like, we have to we have, have Dan to... Aykroyd. Why? Didn't somebody why? say, why? Yeah. What? He never, he didn't even say. He's on Saturday Night Live. What, what's he doing there? I mean, obviously, the the, the event itself was was enormous. It, it big. And, and, you know, the impact was incredible. But we, we don't know any of the dirt behind it. I mean, we know that yeah. Madonna... They asked Madonna to be part of it. She would not. Mm. Prince, again, would not. The two mm-hmm. two of the other big names in the galaxy. But we don't know, like, the dirt. What was the catering situation? Yeah. Like? What was the... Yeah. yeah. What, yeah. Were there, where were the drugs? Who brought the drugs? The only dirt we got out of it was that Al Jarreau was emptying bottle after bottle of wine and had mm. a real hard time on his part. And Lionel Richie was, like, taking the wine and hiding it mm. because Al Jarreau... In Lionel Richie's words, Al Jarreau wanted to celebrate before the project was done. Mm. You know, and because well, they, they just come off that award the, yeah, show. That's yeah, right. that's right. And he just wanted to, get, you know, he was just there, kind of goofing around. Whereas the rest of them were much more serious. And this is for Africa, right? And uh, Stevie Wonder kept messing things up because he wanted to do a part in Swahili. Mm. And finally, somebody said, "They don't even speak Swahili. This is not." They didn't even, have Google. They then. don't have Google. We don't know. We, yeah, they didn't have Google. Yeah. Like, we don't know. No, they don't speak Swahili. They, 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 that's what. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said, "I don't think they speak Swahili." And Kenny Rogers like, "They don't." <laughs> Thanks, Kenny. <laughs> so they got Kenny, did yeah. you know that? Yeah, yeah. Kenny. Have you good. been? Uh, maybe up in a chicken restaurant. Yeah, there. yeah. So, so, so they ditched that idea and went on to the next thing. And you know, the thing about Madonna and Cindy Lauper, at least according to the. Um, documentary was one person really high up in it wanted madonna the other wanted cindy lopper and they fought over it and decided on cindy lopper but i thought madonna turned them, they didn't say madonna turned them down mm. they said that uh, cindy was chosen because whoever was the higher ranking official got cindy lopper i would think you'd want madonna there if you could get her yeah just mm-hmm. like prince and they were huge 1985 huge